Today we're talking about the co-op games from 1996. But first, let's see what else was happening in 96. Nights into Dreams. Resident Evil. Tomb Raider. Duke Nukem 3D. Crash Bandicoot. Pokemon Blue and Red. Mario 64. Wave Race. Pilot Wings. And for the home consoles, we saw the Nintendo 64. Apple Pippin. The Tamagotchi. Neo Geo CD. And the Game Boy Pocket. Now let's talk about the co-op games. Twisted Metal 2 takes the chaotic charm of its predecessor and amplifies it with improved graphics, a diverse cast of characters, and worldwide arena settings. The game retains its over-the-top premise, where drivers mount weapons on their vehicles and engage in explosive vehicle combat. While the story might not be the focus, the eclectic lineup of characters adds depth and fun to the experience. Introducing favorites like Axel and Mr. Slam, the presentation shines with a 90s comic book art style and creepy cutscenes, enhancing the game's unique atmosphere. Gameplay remains straightforward, but gets more intense with larger, more detailed arenas. But the main improvement over the original Twisted Metal is that you can now play through the story mode in split-screen co-op. Metal Slug is an iconic and over-the-top run-and-gun action game that has cemented its place in gaming history. Developed by SNK, this title is a visual spectacle, featuring a cartoony style, explosive action, absurd enemies, and an arsenal of outrageous weapons. What sets Metal Slug apart is its ability to balance intense action with a light-hearted and humorous tone. The story, revolving around global conflict and stolen tanks, serves as a backdrop to the relentless action that never takes itself too seriously. Playing solo or with a friend in co-op mode, you'll embark on a chaotic journey, upgrading your weaponry and commandeering the titular Metal Slugs to wreak havoc on your foes. Kirby Superstar originally graced the Super Nintendo in 1996, and its timeless charm continues to captivate players today. While staying true to the beloved Kirby formula, the game offers a fresh experience by breaking down the adventure into seven distinct platforming games and two mini-games, each with its unique plot and gameplay twists. One standout feature is Kirby's ability to inhale enemies and gain their powers, even creating a CPU-controlled ally or allowing cooperative play. The controls are precise, and while the game may be on the easier side, the abundance of levels ensures lasting enjoyment. Visually, it's a vibrant and detailed masterpiece with stunning bosses and animations. The music, featuring a variety of tunes and solid audio effects, complements the visuals perfectly. Kirby Superstar is a must-have for Kirby enthusiasts, blending nods to classic titles with fresh gameplay ideas that showcase the series at its best and remains a cherished gem in the series. Contra Legacy of War marks a transition from the beloved 2D Contra series to the 3D realm, and while it's not a terrible game, it struggles to capture the essence of its predecessors. This game came out on the PS1 and Sega Saturn. Appaloosa Interactive took the reins from the original Contra team, and their 3D adaption faced several challenges. The game introduces a problematic camera angle, hindering gameplay when running from left to right, as it fails to adjust properly. Despite a smoothly animated 3D world with polygonal terrain and bosses, the game suffers from significant slowdown when overwhelmed by enemies and projectiles. Two-player mode is a welcome return, but it too falls victim to slowdown. While offering four different characters with unique abilities and 3D pad support for aiming, the designs feel generic with flickery depth perspective proves more distracting than enjoyable. Contra Legacy of War is a passable 3D shooter, but it falls short of capturing the magic of its 2D predecessors. Guardian Heroes 
released on the Sega Saturn, is an action RPG that still holds up as a remarkable gaming experience. Unlike typical beat-em-ups, it introduces a combo system that adds depth and precision to combat, allowing players to execute special attacks reminiscent of fighting games. The game features a variety of characters, each with unique abilities, and incorporates RPG elements, such as character progression through experience points and stat customization. The non-linear plot lines offer multiple endings, encouraging replayability. Although some character balancing issues and performance limitations arise when too much action is on screen. And of course, like all good beat em ups, the entire game can be played in two player co op. Guardian Heroes remains a gem worth discovering, offering an engaging and diverse gaming experience that stands the test of time. Battle Garega came out in the arcades. It's a classic manic shooter and excels in delivering adrenaline pumping Twitch style gameplay without complex mechanics. Its relentless level design challenges your reflexes and dexterity, offering little room for pattern memorization. The game adheres to the essence of a manic shooter, emphasizing weaving through cascading bullet swarms, with a fair balance between tiny bullets and hitbox size. It demands precision. Set in a World War II postmodern world, Battle Garega features detailed propeller warplanes in bleak, war-ravaged environments. This hardcore shooter offers a total of eight ships. While the music isn't groundbreaking, it complements the game's overall atmosphere. Battle Garega stands out as a realistic shooter, emphasizing pure, unadulterated fun and embodying the bullet hell shooter spirit. And it's still considered to be one of the best co-op shoot-em-ups of all time. Captain Quasar, developed by Cyclone Studios and published by the 3DO Company in 1996, stands as an enjoyable isometric shooter for the 3DO console. The titular character Captain Quasar, known for his charm and wit, roams fast and bustling environments to bring order to the galaxy. Although he had the potential to be the 3DO mascot, the company opted for Gex, a quick-witted lizard, which many consider a missed opportunity, as Gex lacked the charisma to connect with gamers, as Captain Quasar did. The game's tongue-in-cheek humor, explosions, and puzzles set it apart from a standard console shooter. While not overly complex, the game's simplicity was its charm. Graphically, Captain Quasar showcased the 3DO's power with smooth scrolling, large character sprites, impressive explosives, and detailed effects. Despite its positive reviews and being named 3DO Game of the Year in 1996 by Electronic Gaming Monthly, Captain Quasar couldn't prevent the 3DO's decline, largely due to the arrival of the PlayStation. In Die Hard Arcade, you play as New York cop John McClane. The game continues from the Die Hard with a Vengeance movie plot. You're tasked with saving hostages, including the president's daughter, in a 3D rendered environment. Reminiscent of Virtua Fighter 2, the character models may be jagged, but they move realistically. The gameplay resembles classic side-scrolling beat-em-ups like Final Fight or Streets of Rage, featuring various weapons and combo moves to defeat hordes of enemies. Die Hard Arcade's action-packed gameplay, multiple endings, and simplicity make it a highly enjoyable game, and one of the best 3D beat-em-ups ever. Front Mission Gun Hazard for the Super Famicom is a 2D shooter platformer with RPG elements. It delivers a captivating narrative comparable to the finest RPGs. The storyline unfolds seamlessly through dialogues between characters during and after missions, maintaining excellent pacing. The moment you find an AI companion, if you push down, plus L, plus R, plus start on the second controller, it will enable the second player to play as your companion. Legend of Oasis is an action RPG that unfolds on the island of Oasis. This is the prequel to the Sega Genesis game Beyond Oasis, and much like its predecessor, it plays similarly to a Zelda game. Your primary objective involves exploring maze-like ruins, battling bosses, and acquiring elemental spirits, each with unique abilities. This is another game where you can unlock a two-player co-op mode. While playing, press Z, then hold L, then press X, release both buttons, and a clone should appear. Raystorm, a sequel to Ray Force, continues the legacy of space shoot 'em ups with captivating gameplay and a new story set in the year 2219. The soundtrack complements the gameplay well, though not as memorable as its predecessor. The game introduces two ship modes, R Grey 1 and R Grey 2, catering to different player preferences. 
Weapon upgrades include lock-on lasers and elemental diamonds. Rayforce retains classic shoot-em-up elements while introducing the hyper laser and special attack, adding depth and excitement. It offers a steeper challenge but remains accessible for newcomers. With various home console ports and updates, Raystorm is a must-play for shoot-em-up fans. Reloaded, the sequel to Loaded, faces criticism for not living up to its predecessor. While it improves level design with larger and more varied environments and introduces new characters, it falls short in capturing the original's fast-paced and gory gameplay. The gameplay lacks the intensity of Loaded, and some puzzles can be frustrating. Graphics show improvement overall, and music remains a strong point, offering an upbeat techno soundtrack. Although it's not one of the best run-and-gun shooters, the dark visuals and tone and gore are what make the game stand out and when playing in two-player co-op, it makes for a pretty solid experience. Three Dirty Dwarves, released for the Sega Saturn and PC in 1996, is a side-scrolling action game with a quirky aesthetic and a storyline involving kids summoning three dwarves to rescue them from possible government capture. The gameplay, reminiscent of early Sega arcade beat-em-ups, features unique dwarf characters with distinct weapons, attacks, and strengths, emphasizing teamwork in multiplayer mode. You can play the game in three-player co-op. Players collect items to power special and morph attacks while facing various amusing enemies and bosses. Three Dirty Dwarves is an underrated game that's stuck on the Sega Saturn. If you're able to find a way to play this and you have two friends to join in, definitely give it a try. Dungeons & Dragons Shadow Over Mystera follow-up to Tower of Doom introduces two new characters to the party of adventurers. The Thief and the Magic user join the existing roster, each with unique abilities. The Thief excels at spotting traps, while the Magic user possesses a wide array of attack spells. While the game maintains its beat-em-up roots, it adds depth by incorporating RPG elements. Characters level up as they battle monsters, gaining longer life bars and opportunities to purchase items between levels. The graphics are colorful and detailed, with distinct character designs. Shadow Over Mystera is an excellent beat-em-up with RPG elements and branching paths. And when it comes to four-player arcade beat-em-ups, this is one of the best of all time. So those are some of the co-op games from 1996. What are some games that we missed? And if you enjoyed this video, check out our video from last week where we talked about the co-op games from 1995. Thank you for watching.